Thank you for keeping ten Kenya Television Services. Don't forget this is the economy trend pointer and we are having Professor Dege, Dr. Saisi and Mr. Richard Siel. We are speaking about foreign debt and speaking about the foreign debt, Mr. Saisi, is there any economy measure that would help a country to know if it has too much debt, if this is the right amount of debt to have or any that sort? 1.1 is what we receive as income or revenues from the country. Now what we have to pay is actually 2.8. It's almost even 3 trillion. Mm -hmm. Now what, what is it to say? If a country is able to, or an economy is able to repay the external debt or the internal debt, mm -hmm. that is when we can say you can borrow. There is no measure. The measure could be are you able to repay what you are borrowing? Mm -hmm. So. There are three things I must mention there on this one that are not. One, the income must be able to support mm -hmm. the repayment of that loan. Mm -hmm. Number two is that if you are not able to repay, then there is an indication of you. You are actually gone beyond mm -hmm. the measure you should actually be able to borrow. Mm -hmm. Finally, I should say that um, if your debt always grows, an increment of the debt is higher than the increment of your income then it is causes something to call you have to get worried as a nation or as a country. Thank you. So, so I, I do concur with uh, Mr. Siele. You know, for you to know whether you are doing, you know, uh, you are able to make more debt, even at a personal level, you look at your income. And if you are getting 50 shillings and you want to borrow 60 shillings, you are in trouble. So the issue of knowing whether or not it is better for you to borrow is how much is the country generating as income vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, how much we want to borrow. And that one, I think Mr. Sierra has said it loud and clear. It is based on the income that the country has, uh, and then also other debts that are existing. I think that is the only thing that I can be able to add on that. Professor Ndege, what can a country do to minimize the large amount of foreign debt that it has? Uh, well, we take the cue from what my colleagues have said. A country considers how much income does it have and what is expenditure. Now, uh, it would mean that for a country to minimize foreign debts, mm -hmm. the answer is simple. Mm -hmm. Enhancing incomes. How do you enhance incomes? Mm -hmm. Uh, we need to enhance productivity. Now the problem with our economy, with our country, and many developing countries, is that we seem to specialize on the production of exports. Mm -hmm. Tea, coffee, and now flowers. Mm -hmm. Whose prices at the international markets seem to be, to be low, comparatively, if you compare the prices of our exports with the prices of what we import. Mm -hmm. Now what does that mean? Mm -hmm. That would mean that we need to do a few things. One, why can't we diversify our economy so that we move out of the traditional exports, mm -hmm. so that we have a little more? Why can't we, instead of uh, emphasizing agriculture only, also go into industrialization? Uh, we have a base already. We have the agricultural base and we could establish more agro-based industries. Mm -hmm. Now this will add value to our exports. This will increase incomes. This will then minimize our dependence on, on foreign, uh, foreign aid. Mm -hmm. Another thing is uh, how do we increase the incomes of our people, our farmers? Because increasing their incomes will mean that we strengthen the domestic market so that we do not rely so much on the external market. Mm -hmm. History teaches us that many countries that, de that have developed have empowered their people economically, mm -hmm. so much so that in the initial stages you have uh, the capacity, the people's capacity to buy what they produce is tremendously increased. Thereafter, a country then says, now, how do we deal with the surplus? Then we export them. So in short, I think what the point I'm trying to make is uh, we seriously simply need to find out ways and means by which we can increase income generation.
through uh, strengthening the agricultural sector, diversifying it, and also establishing agro-based industries to add value to our exports so that at the end of the year, our domestic uh, income is, 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 is quite high. That will go a long way in helping us reduce our reliance or our dependency on foreign debt, on foreign... Uh, Maybe picking on what Professor said, mm -hmm. the best thing is industrialization. You know, we need to move from primary goods oriented to manufactured goods oriented. Those goods will uh, be able to fetch more money at the international market mm -hmm. than when we send our raw material that prices keep fluctuating. So uh, if we want to, that's why these countries like Canada and the US and others, you know, they, 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 may, be, they may have the advantage because their economy is more industrialized than uh, Kenyan economy. Mm -hmm. We are more based on raw material rather than uh, going towards industrialization. That is in the future, that's where we want to go. But if we only have this raw material, whether you like it or not, we shall continue borrowing because our exports will always be fetching less than what we import and the balance of payment becomes a problem. Uh, gentlemen, please give us your comments about the standard gauge railway, which is con has been considered the highest debt in Kenya, as well as the Eurobond issue. It is like, um, it is, there's been having in the most recent days that we have something which, as an economist, if we are to touch on it, someone will say you have not touched on it. Mm -hmm. The Eurobond is what, that is money which came in, but we have not seen the effect. As an economist, we have not seen the effect in the country. Mm -hmm. Standard KG Railway, um, it is, to me, it has been seen, because those are two things. Standard KG Railway, which uh, amounting to around 380 or 400 million, billion, billion actually, is a huge cost to the country. It's another external debt, which we are building on another debt which we have. And uh, if you look at the way that it's supposed to be funded, 10% is actually to be funded by the government or the, the other government, mm -hmm. and the 90% by the Chinese government. Now, if you look at the way there's been structured, if I may use that word, is that more is from outside. And um, that means we'll repay in future more money compared to what we are paying now. Number two, the materials, if I may use that, which we are using in building that cage railway is actually being important. That is a scaring as an economist. To me, my the colleague there, Dr. Saisi, has mentioned that um, we need to be having more finished goods. I was presuming that we actually have an industry in the country which is supposed to be generating all those materials you're supposed to use. One, if you see what is being mentioned, what the people employed as we speak currently are actually 25,000 Kenyans, 2,000 Chinese. Suppose there was a factory manufacturing those, those, road, those spare parts or whatever being used in actually building the railway. To me, we could have actually developed the economy. That is one way. In fact, that was a golden opportunity as a country to have what is known as an industrialized economy where we can be able to have a manufacturing company which could be able to be generating those actual parts being used. So, to me, Eurobond, we have not seen. We have actually tightened seen the standard cage railway. My professor and uh, Dr. Eric can actually add something. I'm sure they have something. To add what uh, Mr. Siela said, you know, there are two things. We have the Eurobond and the standard railway cage. Standard railway cage is a loan from Chinese government. And it's over... 3 billion. It's more expensive than the Eurobond. But why are people talking more about Eurobond than a standard gauge? With Eurobond, we had the actual cash money coming. And that is why we are asking where this money went. Because you get a Eurobond and we still find our shillings sliding. 
And yet when you get such money, when you borrow such money, you are cushioning your own shilling. So we are asking, if this money had actually come into the economy, there would have been some kind of uh, change. First, we would have seen our shilling being strong. And secondly, we would have seen investment growing and people being employed. With the standard rail gauge, we are, if you come from Mombasa coming this end, you'll see some work being done. And therefore, and you know what, that loan was not actually purely cash. It was money that came with goods. We are giving you this money, but we shall give you goods instead of the actual cash. That is why maybe tentatively money has not been eaten there. Because more else it is about goods being supplied by Chinese to come and build the railway. But the euro bond, it was about the cash, and that is why there are so many legs are growing. So we want to know where those legs went. Thank you. I want to say about Eurobond is that it demonstrates what we have said about uh, uh, foreign aid and also the standard gauge. It also demonstrates what we said about uh, being assisted to establish an infrastructure. On the one hand, both the Eurobond and the standard railway gauge are, are, are extremely important for Kenya's development. The standard gauge because it increases the railway road network. Look at any developing, developed country. Look at the network of communication. In the United States, for instance, you have roads leading to the west, roads leading to the east, and development cannot come without such uh, you know, closely knit uh, railway and road network. So I think it is in that regard that we must say that the standard railway gauge is, is, is a very important investment for Kenya. Now, we are not in a position to finance it. We have had to get assistance from elsewhere. Uh, the flip side, the flip side of both endeavors uh, is a lack of transparency. Lack of transparency with which we use uh, foreign aid. Eurobond, for instance, is ready money. It comes as ready money. And, uh, you know, Kenya, like any other developing country, we have individuals who see such money as a windfall, as an opportunity to get their paws into it and use that money for purposes the money was not intended. Uh, we have a history for it, the golden bag, the kitchen, the chicken gate. And so that is why Kenyans are concerned. They have not seen how that money has been used. The opposition politicians have made all the noise about it. The government has taken it upon themselves to, to reply. I think it was yesterday or the other day when they took two pages just to, hit, to, 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 to reply the opposition allegations. But I think Kenyans want more than that. Kenyans want to see how that money has been used. Where has it been used? One item by the other. I think the government owes us that level of accountability because at the end of it, it's the ordinary Kenyan who is going to pay back that money. It was not free money. Eurobond money is not free money. It's part of uh, foreign, foreign aid. I think as far as the standard railway gauge is concerned again, and my colleagues have mentioned it, we would have taken that opportunity to insist that, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of uh, machinery that is used there, a lot of materials that are used there should have been generated, should have been made within the country so that we do not depend on imports, which, as we have said here, are normally more expensive uh, for us than our exports. So, much as the two projects, the Eurobond and the Standard Railway Gauge, are on the one hand very positive for this country, I think 
positive aspects can only be enhanced through transparency, through the government telling the country exactly how that money is used, through the government being open about the tendering system in the railway standard uh, gauge railway. I think then we'll be happy well. Our government has uh, done well, but we have yet to see the benefits. And gentlemen, I suppose the government does not settle its foreign debts as much as they are. What's the worst that can happen? And what will happen to the common manage? Two things here. One, the government can plead upon realizing that it's unable to settle foreign debts. The government can plead that the foreign debts be written off. And that has been done. That has been done by donor countries and donor agencies. But if that doesn't happen, what, may, what those donors may do is to blacklist our country. And because we depend so much on foreign aid, if you're blacklisted, we'll be in uh, trouble. Mm. Yes. Thank you. I think uh, I want to add something on what the uh, professor said. It's true, that can happen. The, the other part is uh, the common humanity. If you look at the, in the event there is a default, that will mean in the event we want to borrow, we will not be actually able to get any money. Mm -hmm. And consequently, you will have uh, the essential services which are to be provided by the, by the government of the day mm -hmm. will not be possible. Mwananji will be able to serve mm -hmm. as a consequence of being a default. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, on my part, <coughs> I, I concur with you, but uh, if we fail to pay, number one, what the donors look at is, were you able to pay? How did you use that money? If they see that surely you were in, in trouble, not because of your own making, then they can write off mm -hmm. the way prof said. But if they know that we are just people who like to eat sambusas and other things without really using that money to invest, then they will ask, they will, the way prof said they would blacklist us. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens if we are blacklisted? In this world, you will never be alone. You must depend on others. Mm -hmm. Now, if they, if they blacklist us, it means we cannot access international funds. Mm -hmm. It means that uh, foreign direct investment in our country will not be there. And by consequences of that, unemployment will shoot up. Mm -hmm. Our money will be, uh, the, uh, the devaluation of our shilling will be there. Mm -hmm. And the country will be in shambles. And therefore, the consequence of that will be political appraisal in the countries. Take, for example, Greece of what happened mm -hmm. in Greece when they were unable to pay that. It is because uh, a lot of it, they borrowed more than what they could generate as a country. And therefore, that is why uh, they, they had to crumble up to now. They are yet to come out of the woods. So I think that is where the thing is. Unemployment will be very high. We shall have uh, the prices of goods and services will be high because there will be very few things, goods and services that are being produced mm -hmm. in this country. Okay. In, gentlemen, in less than 30 seconds, let's get your final comments, Mr. Richard. Thank you. I think um, as an economy or as a nation like Kenya, minimize external debt or minimize debt and more so minimize the external debt. Thank you. Well, I think Kenya cannot be uh, an island unto itself. We're operating in the world economy. Kenya is among developing countries that rely on debt. Uh, we cannot extricate ourselves immediately out of it. The best thing we can do is to minimize the debt through enhancing our own uh, productivity in the country so that we make our economy more dynamic and rel reliant on foreign uh, uh, monies. Sure. And for me, let us live within our means. That's what I'm saying. If you can't eat chapati, eat mboga. True. If you can't eat nyama, eat sukumawiki. Mm -hmm. If we can live within our own means, 
these debts can be controlled. Thank you very much. Thank you for keeping it tight, yes, and more so the economy trend point on. I've been your host, Immaculate Burunja. Until next time, see you again. All models are, uh, in economics are talking about money. It is only how that money is. The way we have been paying our debt has really been increasing in with figures as we go along. And we borrow to pay, which means that we find ourselves and our country in a situation of perpetual dependency.